It's the K-pop cast, and I'm joined here by Supermatic K-pop B-boy. What's up, Supermatic? Hello, everyone. How y'all doing out there? And I am DJ Pilo. Well, give me your best Tiffany impression. Best Tiffany hmm. from Genie. <laughs> DJ. Peter Lowe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, I'm a K-pop DJ, um, and we're here to do a special edition episode of the Daybok Awards. This is something that we had running um, towards the end of 2016, where we asked you for all the categories that didn't make it to the Mom Awards. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we're not looking for necessarily... Uh, the best performer, but rather the misfit mascots, the, <laughs> the ones who were quirky in one way or another, and for what we'll always remember them by. <laughs> So, shall we go through the categories? Supermatic. Yeah, why not? Let's get to it. <laughs> okay, so for 2016, we had mm-hmm. the first award here, Loudest Outfit, given to the group where they are on the cutting edge of fashion, but maybe they are a little too sharp <laughs> for groups who are coming off as being too garish or loud. So the joke is always that, I'm sorry I couldn't hear you of your outfit. Yep. <laughs> These groups step up to the plate. So, who do we have in third place for Lada's outfit? All right. So, in third place, we actually had the boys from Shiny with their one of one concept, which I'm not too surprised about. I mean, it was all 90s. The 90s yeah. was pretty loud. <laughs> yeah, I, it, it was cool. Yeah. I, I really liked it. You know, mm-hmm. the, the really, it, it totally reminds me of the Yes and L. Um, Ah, yes, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yep. I used to say SNL. Yep. But I'm referring to, you know, put your dick in a box. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but they had a retro 90s mm-hmm. concept for that SNL skit. It's the same concept that they brought to Shiny's 101. Yep. But it was good. It was mm-hmm. fun. Second place, we had Icon. Yes, that's right. They had 21% of the vote. Mm-hmm. And, and tell me about their outfit, Supermatic. So, funny enough, we uh, talk about other award shows, and these, this was their outfit that they wore for their performance medley at the Melon Music Awards of 2016. Let's just say that they went with a camo look that wasn't really, like, it didn't scream too much army camo. It just screamed very neon bright camo, unless yeah. that's what they were going for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that this is one of something one of our listeners suggested. They mm-hmm. said like, "Oh, do Icon at the Melon Music Awards," yep. and so yeah, that's why I got second place. Um, first place. Yeah, drum roll. <laughs> it goes to the boys of NCT One Twenty Seven with whoop 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 fire, fire truck. truck. <laughs> fire truck. <laughs> Sabancha 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 Yeah, uh, I, I don't know. I didn't think of those outfits were too loud, honestly. I could see why they would get the vote, but I'm kind of with you in the same, uh, in the same vein as well. It's like I would have thought some of the other nominees would beat them out, but they won. <laughs> yeah, I, I think if you look at their music video, maybe yeah. they are seen as being particularly loud and garish against all the very sober and somber white people. Yeah. <laughs> in the music video who are, you know, disrupted by these like noisy kids from mm-hmm. Hot Topic. Yep. <laughs> Pretty much. You've disturbed our nice quiet community. <laughs> who are you? <laughs> All right. So congratulations, <laughs> NCT127. You have the loudest outfit of yep. 2016. <laughs> Fire truck. Move it on. Mm-hmm. Next up, we have finest wonderful treasure find. What's the concept behind this category? So it's pretty much for all those moments where you're watching a K-pop music video, and even among K-pop standards, you just find yourself saying, "What did I just watch?" Or in other words, another meaning of the acronym WTF. <laughs> yeah, it's a most wonderful treasure find because you just find yourself head scratching, but yeah, you're mesmerized by it. <laughs> right. 
Yeah, so we uh, had not a lot of nominations for this category. I was expecting, honestly, more, but mm-hmm. I think the ones who did break it to the top three were, were worth it. Yep. So in third place, uh, we actually reviewed it for a previous WTF yes. uh, on our show. And it's this unknown group, virtually unknown group, mm-hmm. called Iren, and it's their song called But. You can probably guess what that song is about, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's funny because we recently changed our hosting provider to um, SoundCloud. Mm-hmm. And I set the um, teaser image for that episode to a screen cap of their butts. Ah. For butt, and that got more clicks. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know what works. <laughs> yeah, so that, that, that is a gem. Yep. What else do we have for second place? So for second place, we actually had what I thought was going to be the breadwinner here. Yeah. It's Kokosori's Exquisite. And I I, I totally would have... That's what I would have guessed Mm -hmm. as well. Um, For those of you who aren't familiar, Kokosori are... It's going for like the otaku crowd because it was like two girls trying to act really kawaii. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say egyo. It's more kawaii. Yeah. and they've got the cat ears from their hair. Yep. <laughs> and it's it starts off a really fast paced song and then it goes <laughs> into a really crazy break with cat screams yep. <laughs> and heavy metal. <laughs> and it's just like, what just yep. happened? Um, I like that song just yep. because for that reason. <laughs> but yeah, so they got thirty point seven seven percent of the vote mm-hmm. and first place we actually had sistar and their collab with Giorgio Moroder with one more day one more day <laughs> yeah so that one I guess the only thing WTF about it and I, I was surprised to see it rank so highly mm-hmm. in our poll here was that um, it starts off kind of as like a, a flirty love scene yeah between you know two ladies and then it turns into how to get away with murder yeah it, it's <laughs> complete like yeah. shift tone just it, it's <laughs> just like what it, it's it's like one of those family guy episode mm-hmm. family guy jokes where the joke goes on for too long yep that's pretty much what i thought of this song where it's like okay wait they hit him over the head with a wine bottle which explodes into pink sparkles and <laughs> and uh and whatnot and then um then it shows them <laughs> taking him away and burying him and then getting away with it as if like nothing happened so because it's k-pop why not (laughs) yeah yeah it's a good song though yeah i like it so uh congrats Mm -hmm. sister and uh giorgio for winning our finest wonderful treasure find or 2016 yep So this next category, I was afraid that we might offend some people. <laughs> um, Considering Aegyo is one of the uh, cornerstones of K-pop. <laughs> it, it is. It, it's one of those <laughs> defining characteristics unique to the genre. Yep. Um, Aegyo, I think, oftentimes means that you need to pretend like you're cute and helpless. <laughs> um, so we describe this as, you stupid boing boing. <laughs> These Aegyo idols, in their effort to advance the state of Aegyo, become helpless to basic common sense or coordination. Mm -hmm. So, in third place, we actually had, it looks like it was a tie. Oh, wow. Between La Boom. Oh, with their shooting love. Boom, boom. Yeah. (laughs) Shooting love. And and G-Friends, Navalera, both getting 9% of the vote. Mm -hmm. Who got second? So, this one was actually a surprise to me because I did not think of this for nominations, but it was actually all of the teaser videos for the girls of Twice leading up until the release of TT. Yeah. Which I could kind of see because they're all like pretty much the concept of the teasers was them trying something and the failing. Yeah. (laughs) So, and and I I feel like, yeah, there was a certainly an element of cuteness there mm-hmm. or egg there because it's like huh i did something wrong a cute face yeah and they're making that tt emoji which is crying which well it's supposed to be cute but. right yeah yeah so i i mean i didn't like it yeah but, <laughs> but it only got 27.27 percent mm-hmm. of the vote in our poll 
<laughs> and uh, first place. So for first place, the winner, <laughs> which I don't think Peter and I are necessarily too surprised about, <laughs> it goes to the ladies of the subunit AOA Cream with I'm Jelly Baby. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's I, sort of become kind of a running joke among you and I, and even our uh, our other co-host Nurse Joyce, <laughs> and maybe some other special guests we've had on the show too. Where AOA just seems to try so hard with the egg yolk that they just look more pathetic and failing than they do cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, so Cream is known for like these three girls, like they're into this guy. Mm-hmm. The guy is clearly going for a different girl. Yep. Um, so they plot revenge against him. Mm-hmm. In the most pathetic, cute way possible. Yeah, <laughs> it's like they're they're clearly trying to get revenge, but they have no idea how to. <laughs> like they yeah. they literally do not know what they're doing. <laughs> I I mean I think just what adds to the whole comedy of it. If you listen to the music video version of the song, mm-hmm. at one point one of the girls kicks them in the shins. Oh, and that's when right. and when she kicks them in the shins, so you hear like a cartoonish like boring. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like. Okay, so not a way to do murder, or not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sister. Not a way to do revenge. Yeah. All right, so this next category, I think, is very definitive mm-hmm. of 2016. Yes. And I'm looking forward to do this, doing this again for 2017. <laughs> Definitely. But it's the most fantastic, elastic English lyrics in any K-pop song. Mm-hmm. Um, so some of these lyrics just make you want to go ring, ding, 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 <laughs> ding, 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 or maybe don't sigh a day. <laughs> right. Uh, so third place, who do we have? We actually have the ladies from uh, Blackpink with the iconic Lisa's Brr Rambo. Brr Rambo. <laughs> I'm going to go Brr Rambo. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I thought that was clever, you yeah. know, adding like a sound effect mm-hmm. uh, into their rap. So that was pretty cool. Um, she got 21.43% 40, of the vote. Actually, not bad for uh, yeah. Blackpink, a rookie group that debuted in 2016. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So hats off, Blackpink. Yep. So, uh, moving on to the uh, second group. place. Yep. That received second place. We actually have the boys of NCTU, se- the Seventh Sense, with of course them telling us to open our eyes, or uh, are they telling us to eyes. open our rice? <laughs> open your rice. <laughs> right. Fantastic, elastic, indeed. <laughs> yeah, uh, I I think that was just the the sort of fan joke. Yep. I mean, it, it, affectionately, a lot of the fans and stands of NCT mm-hmm. um, always called it "Open Your Rice." Yep. So they got twenty five percent of the vote. And no surprises for first place. Definitely not. <laughs> also, uh, for me, especially considering I recently did a performance with this song and the uh-huh. audience took it upon themselves to shout out this certain part while we were dancing it, it goes to the boys of BTS with blood, sweat, and tears, the whole peaches and cream, sweeter than sweet, chocolate cheeks and chocolate wings. So good job, Ratmon. You have an iconic line in, in a song that has won our most fantastic elastic of 2016. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that th- this is the new fan chant mm-hmm. for the song. <laughs> yeah. Chocolate cheeks, <laughs> chocolate wings.
All right. Uh, I I was surprised. So BGA, they were nominated. They only got seven percent of the vote. Mm, I, I wish right. they could have made it. But yeah. Whatever. <laughs> they had some really poetic lyrics, in my opinion. <laughs> Definitely. Hey girl, you already know what I'm gonna say. Not dong sire day. Moving on. Best scene still an extra. So we noticed this, I think, with, uh, I think it was EXO when we first noticed this, that yes. there was a, a scene stealing extra mm-hmm. in the song who you kind of weren't sure who was the star yeah. of, of the music video. So where most music videos evenly distribute screen time across all members of a group, mm-hmm. occasionally the saxophone cat or the puppet dude in high heels yeah. steals the show. <laughs> so third place, who do we have? So we have in third place the uh, aforementioned saxophone cat from Crayon Pop's Doo Doom Chit. Yeah, mm-hmm. we we love that saxophone yeah. puppet yep. guy. In the, <laughs> but he only got seven uh, percent mm-hmm. of the vote. Yeah. Well, once they find once our listeners hear who got first place and how much of the vote, I don't think they'll be too surprised. No, no, no. <laughs> so really quickly, second yes. place. So second place goes to the. Amazing props to you, dude who dances in high heels in the Brave Girls music video for High, high heels. heels. Like, that dude is just so full of sass. I think he outdoes the girls. Oh, the yeah. Sass, I mean, he, he delivers. Yeah. And I kind of wish he got more screen time. Yeah, me too. He's been in some other music videos, too, and he was also on Hit the Stage this past uh, oh, really? season as a dance member for some I, of the I girls. I would just watch it just for him. <laughs> right? It's yeah. like, uh, we need to see more of that in K-pop. Mm-hmm. It's funny, because whenever I see like cover groups yep. for K-pop music videos, sometimes the guys, like, yeah. they really bring the sassy girl dance moves more mm-hmm. than the girls do in, in yep. some of these cover groups and i think it's just always so funny especially when they wear high heels but they definitely have that performance aspect on log like you just can't help but watch them yeah, yeah. <laughs> so but first then, place yeah moving on to first place i think this also is not a surprise to you and me peter nope shout outs to the pink bear mvp yeah. and excel's dancing king <laughs> yeah he, he had a really transfixing quality where yes um you know, we follow this pink bear guy on his journey to go mm-hmm. to an EXO concert. Yep. Um, also training with the EXO members. Yep. Um, <laughs> Interacting with the XOLs and other fans in well, line. Well, he, he had a, a magical quality where these fans he saw, he would somehow change their faces. Yeah. <laughs> to, to pink smileys. But yep. <laughs> yeah, he was rocking it in that really fashionable, mm-hmm. uh, you know, denim. Yep. <laughs> And he, he's got some pretty good dance moves. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, anytime you can be a scene steal and extra and rock denim as well, on top of being an inanimate object, props to you. <laughs> yeah. So, so congratulations. Congrats. Yep. Yes. Congrats, Pink Bear MVP. Up next. Oh, this was a fun one. <laughs> yeah, so it's what we call nudge, nudge, mm-hmm. wink, wink. Say no more, say no more. <laughs> know what I mean? Know what I mean? Our most suggestive and mature <laughs> S and A- M. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, I mean, what, what did you really think S M? You know, stood for? Definitely not the music label. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right, I, I, it, it's something that I'm always excited by when mm-hmm. I'm looking at music videos, like how much you know, nudge nudge, <laughs> how much sexual innu- innuendo are they gonna you know put into yeah. a, a song or concept, whether lyrically or especially visually yes. in the music video. Yeah. <laughs> right. So we had a tie. It looks like for second and third place. Oh wow! Yeah. 
All right, so tied in second place, we actually had Monster X was all in. Of course, that fan service. <laughs> yeah, it, when we first opened this poll, yeah, um, they were leading. Mm -hmm. They were in first place. And we, when we were, Matt and I, we were just kind of scratching our heads by that. I mean, yeah. we had other ones on there, which we thought were more deserving mm -hmm. of that award. But, hey, we opened it up to you guys, the fans. Yep. And, uh, yeah, it was guy and guy. <laughs> Pretty much. Boys of love. I, I think the girls just go crazy for that kind of thing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. But they did tie with another group, which actually happens to be Exit with their song, Lie. E-X-I-D. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that that song. I mean, there's a lot of funny, um, funny SNM, like just so. For example, uh, I forgot which the the name the m name of the member, but she's uh, she's hammering meat. I think that's honey. Whacking <laughs> yep. meat. <laughs> yep. Uh, so there's a lot of I mm. I get the joke and yep. you know watching kids go to their hotel room. <laughs> yeah. So that's EXID. Mm -hmm. Her song lie. So they tied, which brings us to our first place winner. Oh, yes. And our, our second and third place, they each got 23.8% yep. of the vote. So first place, mm -hmm. and this makes the most sense. Yep. I, I'm kind of glad that this winner made it back on top. Yep. It is the solo debut from Faye from Miss A and her song, Fantasy. I mean, that title alone, if you haven't seen the music video, you can kind of guess. But then the music video, for those who have seen it, She's pretty much a guy's fantasy. <laughs> yeah, I, I think JYP mm -hmm. mentioned that you know he's trying to. He actually viewed her as a muse. Yep. And uh, I I don't know. I think JYP is trying to be poetic about it, but it just ended up being kind of creepy. Yeah. But I think he was trying to say something like uh, balancing the line between being sexy and creative mm -hmm. at the same time, but not being too overbearing for each. Yeah. Something along those lines, but. Yeah, I think if you're doing a dance cover of Faith's Fantasy, you know what you're doing. Yep. <laughs> there's there's no secrets mm -hmm. behind what's what this is really about. Definitely. And that got 38.46% of yeah. the vote. So congrats to Faye and Fantasy for taking the most suggestive and mature Daybok Award. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to this next one, speaking of JYP, brilliant segue. Of course, it's a standard in K-pop songs, but especially with JYP songs, that you hear that iconic JYP Jasper <laughs> or his, intro. Yeah, it's his uh, producer tag. Yeah. I mean, the joke here is uh, if you gave birth to a child with JYP, would you lean over it and say, this was a JYP <laughs> production? <laughs> right. <laughs> or it's like if they ask, oh, who's the daddy? He'll just lean over and whisper, JYP. <laughs> 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 yeah so this uh, the winner for this category it kept changing i don't think anyone seemed to really care about it i think people were just kind of voting at random yeah. <laughs> for this one it's so, actually really close across all four nominees yeah basically everyone kind of tied mm -hmm. our contestants were the unnies <laughs> well, shut up <laughs> yeah and then we had uh triple t with Born to be Wild. Yeah, I like the JYP intro in that yeah. one. Because like, he, he shouts out and projects Triple T's name, so then when he's introducing himself, he goes to his iconic whisper. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, Hyoyeon, Moon, and then it's like, and JYP. <laughs> right, right. Hyoyeon, Moon, Kwan, and JYP. Then we had uh, his own self-starring. Yep, still alive. Still alive. He's self-deprecating, but also like funny ode to the fans out there. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, he, you know, this this old guy is still going, mm -hmm. and I, I loved how he he trolls everyone in yep. the music video. They all line up at the beginning to see Got Seven, all mm -hmm. these excited girls, and then they see, they look at the signature, and the girl's confused, and then she looks up, and it's JYP. Yep. And that's where you hear that. It's JYP. Yep. <laughs> Everyone's, you know, frustrated and disappointed. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, first place. 
for the best JYP intro. <laughs> Which is actually interesting considering that he doesn't whisper this one. <laughs> That's right. It goes out to the ladies of IOI. Woo! Was very, very, very JYP in that beginning. JYP. Well, JYP, finally. <laughs> yep, that's right. And, you know, I think he he rightfully deserves the mm-hmm. producer credit for that one. He produced probably the best song for IOI. Yeah. I think, you know, out of all the other ones that they, they had, this was uh, very, very, mm-hmm. very, it was probably their best. Yep. Which was funny because I remember we reviewed this for one of our Daybok or Not uh, segments earlier in the year. Mm-hmm. And one of the comments that I think I remember reading or maybe we both uh, cited was that people were saying maybe JYP doesn't know how to write for a younger group these That's days. Right, yeah. But then lo- look what happened. Very, very, very is most oftenly across the board cited as, as you said, their best song. So good job, JYP. You yep. won for your own category. <laughs> yep. Or <laughs> very, very, very. So, you know, when you're at a gig and you, you want to give the speakers you know, just a little something extra, right? Mm-hmm. And you're at like 10. We want to take it up even more. Yep. <clears throat> Not to 11. Probably more like a 20. <laughs> okay. But for any of those songs that want to yep. like, take it to 11. Yep. 11. Um, these are the songs mm-hmm. for when you want to like turn it all the way up. So. Yep. Uh, this this is the the most turned up banger or biggest drop, and we had a lot of nominations uh, yep. for this particular award. Mm-hmm. Let's kick it off for third place, which looks like third place was a tie. Yep, getting a lot of ties lately. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, third place was a tie between Twenty Four K, those boys with the bingo, B I N G O, which you definitely could see yourselves shouting out at the club if this comes on. But of course, that also tied with. Huna's How's This? Yeah. Which we both agreed was like very much Huna, you know? Like we, we joked about it, but it was also the truth, which is that the concept for How's This was she's Huna, she's sexy, and she's throwing out another banger. <laughs> right, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I uh, Huna's How's This was for twerking. Mm hmm. And that's um, what. What DJs refer to, I think, still falls into the ca- banger category. Yep. These are for your uh, headliner spots. Yep. In in the in the you know in the night. Mm-hmm. You know, these are the most. This is like your eleven thirty till twelve thirty. Yeah. Time slot in the night. This is what you drop when you've got the floor packed. You are like jam packed right. to the brim, and everyone is just waiting for you to drop that song to make them go crazy. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, yeah, it's definitely in that category. B i n g o mm-hmm. by twenty four k. I think is. Um, you know, dope. It, mm-hmm. It's turned up to eleven. Yeah, but as the how you misfits tweeted at me, mm. they said, um, you know, it's nice, um, but it's not turned up <laughs> like the first place winner. Ah, okay. Uh, so in second place, second place once again we have the young ladies of Blackpink with Boombaya, <laughs> Boombaya, which definitely makes sense. I mean that that was a song worthy of being called a banger as well. Yeah, I and I, I, and I, I made a DJ edit, which I think we mm-hmm. played on um, yep. our live shows a couple times where uh, I use a little John mm-hmm. samples and <laughs> <to be> even <laughs> yep. more turned up. I remember when we reviewed it, like we both agreed that Whistle was probably the better song, but Boom By Us definitely the, the one banger. that as a DJ, you will be dropping in the clubs. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you can play Whistle in the club too, but That's it depends true. when you play it. That's true. So yeah. Whistle is more the opener set. Mm-hmm. Um, Boom By Ya is the, you know, the yeah. trance anthem that sort of thing a big uh you know big room house yep sort of thing at 22.73 yep percent of the vote Which in first place to first place with 31.82 percent of the vote and you could say that this song is lit yep <laughs> definitely fun fact on our last episode i actually mentioned this as my favorite hit of 2016 that's right <laughs> It goes to the Bangtan Boys, BTS, with fire. Fire. Yeah, so that's what the Hollywood Misfits were saying that. Yep. For them, uh, you know, the biggest banger is always, uh, it's it's always BTS. Yep. Fire. Definitely. And, and this, this song, so I'm DJing at Sack Anime tomorrow. Mm. Got to play this. Yep. Every <laughs> night, so. So all you K-pop fans in Sacktown coming through. 
keep an eye out for that. Well, I, I think this episode is probably coming out after. That's you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'd have to edit this episode. But yeah, BTS, no surprises there. Biggest drop. Mm-hmm. Everyone wants to, you know, dance to that song. And that song is lit. It's on fire. Yep. Fire! <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, ah, so everyone, I I think if you listen to other K-pop podcasters out there, they're all doing their all you know year-end awards right now, mm-hmm. and uh, this is us doing the same category. Yep. So whereas these other categories, we tried being quirky, mm-hmm. trying being silly and goofy, provide a little um, something different and fun for all you listeners out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Most Daybok is the best song for the year. Um, which we reviewed in our mm-hmm. uh, weekly day back or not segments. So we had, of course, all the nominees from all our day back or not yep. sections, a lot of votes for this award. Um, so I'll pass it your way for our third place winner. Yeah. So coming in at third was the boys of EXO. EXO is often cited as some of the kings of K-pop these days, right? Yeah. So it's appropriate yeah. that they actually... Got a third place finish in this category for Dancing King. <laughs> yeah. So that took 8.82% of the vote. I Pink think it was the Pink Bear guy, you know. Is Pink Bear MVP. The Pink Bear guy. <laughs> Second place. It's we, the better of the Black Pink songs. Yep. <laughs> it's Whistle. Mm-hmm. Like a Missile. Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they got 23.53%. Yep. Um, so congrats to... Blackpink. That's actually a good chunk of the vote considering how many nominees are in this category. Yeah, and a lot of votes for it too. So, yep. yeah. If you can get a fourth of the vote among like what, 12, 13, 14 different nominees, good job. Yeah, but good job, Blackpink. I mean, this mm-hmm. was their debut yep. song and, you know, it was them setting the impression, setting the tone for the rest of their K-pop image, their brand, their career. So they made it. They Definitely. broke through. I'm excited to see what they bring us 2017. Yeah, yeah. In first place. So in first place, we actually have... EXO again with Lotto. <laughs> yeah, and I think Matt and I were both kind of scratching our heads. Yeah, like, we were like, really? what? Like, did, did the EXO Elsh just come through in the last second to put their boys on top? <laughs> yeah, I mean, BTS only got 5% of the vote. Yeah. For Blood, Sweat, Tears. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm kind of wondering. Yeah. Where are you, BTS <laughs> Army? <laughs> like, where's, where's the Army? I <laughs> think, you, you know, let the XLs take this one? <laughs> I, yeah. I don't I don't know what it says about our listeners. Yeah. Um, or the people who vote in these things. But it was clearly a battle between Blackpink and XO. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think, you know, they're just fighting against each other to try to get their respective group on top to win most day block. <laughs> yeah, so uh, congrats all you Blackpink fans and uh, and exotics. All right, so that's it for Daybok or Not Awards 2016. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. We, cheers, look cheers. Forward, we look forward to bringing the 2017 installment. It's going to be an interesting year. 